Hello, everybody. Today we'll have another episode of Embodying the Logos. My guest is Corey, and he has a, a question about systems that he wants to circumambulate. So, yeah, Corey, like, what do you think systems are, and why? Why do you want to explore those? Well, I'll give you some background. I quite often encounter people that say the system's broken, right? Or they say, you know, the I mean, Mark kind of like, I, and Mark did a video on this too that I asked at a request for uh, Mark of Navigating Patterns. And uh, so what do people mean when they say the system? Is it just, a, is, is, because does that even make sense? Is it just a whole series of like smaller interlaced network individual systems? Like you can't have, can you even have an overarching system that can be broken? So, and then, and then I, the more I thought about it, I thought, what do they mean when they say the system's broken? And I thought like, okay, what even is a system, right? So, yeah, so it's, it's very, the more I thought about it, the, the more I realized I don't really know what people, I don't think people even know what they mean when they say that. Mm -hmm. and, and Mark was saying that, that people are just trying to grab, trying to get agency and kind of bring some intelligibility to complex phenomena. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not what he said. That's my take on it. Mm -hmm. so yeah like you you can think of a framework right which is it's like the skeleton of a building that that holds it up right so so then because because there's load bearing things then the the way that you can make the rooms in the building is is limited right like there's there's only mm -hmm. certain configurations that that you can have right so but but it it is also allowing you to build up right like without the framework you, you can't go up in the sky because it needs to be holed up right so i think if you have a spiritual uh thing like that right like there's there's this set of constraints or the set of rules or 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 the set of natural laws right that that people participate in and and they allow people to to build like they they allow people to build complexity past the natural and uh, this complexity past the natural is allowing us a bunch of things right like we're a system allows you to outsource your cognition it allows you to outsource your, your relationship uh, with, with with people right like in some sense you can just say oh I'm, I'm handing you this paper and you know what to do because we mm. organized our relationship and I don't have to know who's in front of me. I don't, I don't have to be able to communicate with a person as long as I know this language of the system. I, I can have a transactional or, or yeah, or, or more in, in impersonal relationship with you, right? Like I don't relate to you as a person. I, I relate to you as, as a cog in the machine that, that fulfills a certain function. Right now, that's and, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Continue. Uh, no, so there, there was one thing that I got stuck. You were saying beyond the natural, which I had trouble with, but then you and I cut you off before you were really getting going. So I apologize for that. Uh, cog in the machine. So quite often, people are like, "Oh, you're just a cog in the machine, man," you know, or something to that effect, which was kind of like the move that Mark made in the voice that I didn't like. But like, it's interesting because some people, I like what you said about the rooms, right, and the constraints. Because some people don't, they want ultimate freedom, but they don't realize that they need the walls and they need the roof and they need the floors in order to act with agency, right? They think that they can just like eliminate the the pillars of the the pil the foundation of the system and be, and then they'll be able to function in a pure utopia or something. Right, and 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 you can live in a hut, right? And um, you can even live outdoors, but that's a trade-off. Like, so now you can do certain things, right? You get more freedom in certain ways, but now nature is going to kick your ass, right? Like, like you're not going to be able to flush your toilet. Like, what are you going to do with your trash? You need to dig a hole or whatever, or like go bring it somewhere else. Like if, if someone has malintent, right? Like where's, where's the society that, that will put the policeman uh, in front of your door, like the people that will stand behind you to to cover your ass, right? Like, so so 
there, there, there's different levels in, in the Plato's Republic. He, he, he talks about this, right? Like there's different levels where you can have the city, right? So you have a city that's basically living with nature, right? With, with, with a little bit of adaption like homes and, and agriculture, right? And then, and then you have a complex system, right? Where you have specialization, right? And the specialization allows you to have affluence, right? And then if you want more luxury, right? Like things that you don't necessarily need or, or, or that, that aren't that, like, they're not contributing to, to living, they're contributing to the quality of living instead, all right? Um, then you, you, you generate things of value, right? And then he says, well, like people are gonna wanna steal that from you. So you need an army to protect it, right? And you need to have trade and trade brings in other things, right? So now you have to protect from the other things like cult other cultures, right? Because like you're gonna have to maintain your culture else, else you can't do the things that you wanna do, right? And, and so there's these trade-offs and, and yeah, people are not fully recognizing what that means and, and how to, to do that. Yeah, that's really good. I had a thought and I had lost my train of thought. I got distracted for a second. Yeah, so in a sense, when people say the system is broken, what they're really saying is they want to overcome the constraints of the system, but they feel that the system is holding them back somehow. They, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, they, yeah. And ironically yeah. enough, when you have like alternatives to the system, new systems will emerge, right? <laughs> yeah. And what? What, the other thing I was thinking about it is how how do networks play into systems, right? Like you you could have different systems network together, or or is a system a, a series of networks of I I want to say nodes, but like I'm trying to like there's something that's in my mind that I'm not able to articulate. Yeah, so so you you could say that that a network is a higher level system, right? Mm -hmm. So you could say a city is is a system, right? But you can have a trade network between the cities, right? So, yeah. so now there's a system that has a production, and they can outsource the cutting of the trees and and making the wooden shoes happen somewhere else, and then selling the wooden shoes happen somewhere else again, right? And 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 so we we get these really complex uh, dependencies, right? And economies that that are these these systems that that are interrelated right you can you can say well like a neighborhood is a system right like a neighborhood is a system that's not self-sufficient right because it's yes, dependent yes. upon the city right but but it but it is a system right like there there, there is a self-sufficiency on on some level right like because we identify it as as a unity right so so like uh, the neighborhood probably has self-determination in, in some sense, right? Like we want to have this road be this way or whatever, right? Like we want to have more police or less police. We want to have these these rules, building rules, right? Like, because we want to have this, we, we, we want to host this spirit, right? Like, and the spirit needs, needs a container and we're, we're going to cultivate this container, right? Like we're going to uh, care care for it. And, and so now like, if, if that can happen, in, yeah, go ahead. No, I just had a question. Like, okay, I, I didn't want you to get too far ahead of me because I have trouble keeping up. So when you when you mentioned the container, that was really interesting. So what do you mean with the, with the container in relationship to systems? Right. So you have so you have the broken windows theory, right? Which which effectively nah. says, right, like if if you don't take care of something, then people are not gonna feel like they they need to uphold a certain certain quality of, of, of existence, right? Like, and, and more things are allowed, right? So in shaping the environment, you you have, you send a message, right? Like, so if, if, if you have this, this Russian concrete uh, buildings, right? Like that, that are all in Eastern Europe, right? Like there's, there's this, this sense of efficiency, right? But also, a dadness, right? Like, like it, it creates an atmosphere, right? And and people are gonna live out that atmosphere, right? And and when you when you have all these postmodern buildings, right? Like that that don't 
they don't commune, right? Like there's no central coherence, right? Like then there's there's this attention grabbing environment, right? But but there's no no peace, right? Like there's no unity, there's no no being, right? And and now you have you have other ways of of organizing your neighborhoods, right? And and all of these things they they present you with like, do I want to build a pub here, right? Like it, like I might not want to build a pub under this concrete flat right because like that's that's not the neighborhood and 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 the people that that i want to attract right so so yeah that's that's what i'm talking about with cultivating the spirit right like are are you are you are you the place that the pe person wants to have their business right like is is this a pay place that people feel attracted to so i was thinking of something i work at a hospital right and uh as i i was on refuse one day and I was, you know, picking up all the garbage in the building. So I got to go get all the garbage, see all the different parts of the building, right? And seeing how, like, each part, had, like, you have to have more, you have to have a uh, kitchen, you have to have, you know, like, all these things. I thought, wow, who designed this and how did they design it? And I thought our systems, we think, I think sometimes when people talk about the system is broken or they're against the system, I think they honestly think that there's one person designing it all or, or that, you know, or maybe they think that that they could collectively design it or something, but but everyone's equal and everyone has the same skills, and everyone has the same job. But that doesn't make sense. You need kind of hierarchies and different skills to move. The thing that I'm wondering is, are systems emergent? Like, is a hospital um, created, or is it like kind of an almost an emergent phenomenon that's almost beyond the architect, right? Because the architect will design the hospital, but in the end, that hospital is going to have to have to be jerry rigged. I mean, the workers, like I've heard workers say. Oh yeah, you can design this on paper, but we got to build it. So like, there's, you know, at each level, there's going to be corporations, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So we were talking about the four causes earlier, and I think this might be a point to bring that in, actually. So, yeah, you have the final cause, right? Like the telos, the purpose, and it's like, okay, what what do I want to do with a hospital? Well, I I want to house a bunch of people. I, I, I want to have staff that can reach the people in this amount of time, right? Like with like, okay, so now you're getting a bunch of constraints, right? On what, what you want to design, because you, you can't have all the people that need to facilitate the patients on one side of the building and, and have the patients on the other side, right? Cause that's, and then, and then you got to have food for them. You got to have like, scrubs for the nurses that they needed or the doctors you got to have like food for the doctors to eat you got to have like uh the cleaning staff you got the cooking staff you know to make the meals you got to have the the lab to, to you know like it's just it's amazing how, how it all fits together right and when i thought of it i thought of it as similar to a to a ship right like i worked on the ships and like it too was a, like a self-contained system so the hospital in many ways is self-contained but it's still like intricate and interrelated but i was like yeah so i uh, Hmm. Going back to the question, yeah, let's discuss the thing of emergence a little further. Yeah, so so yeah, maybe a ship is easier, right? Because like a ship is is more constrained by itself, right? Because it, it, it has limited amount of space, right? And there's also no one going knowing like people are only there's only inputs and outputs when you're at port. Other than that, it is completely self-contained. Right. And and then at first, like there was rowing ships, right? So now you, you need to facilitate the motor of the ship, which is oars, and, and like they need to be on the side, right? And then need, need people need benches for the oars, right? So then what you can do with the rest of the ship is really limited, right? Mm. And then you get sails, right? Like you now you can make bigger ships, and, and so and now, now what are you gonna do, right? When you make a bigger ship, are you gonna are you gonna make a, a room for the captain, or are you gonna make a kitchen, or are you gonna make a shelter for sleep? Like like you you gotta make a decision, right? Like and I bet all of those decisions were made, right? Like like those actually existed, right? And then there there is an evolutionary aspect to to this. Yeah, right? I was like, gonna say that. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. So, but 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 it's not. It's not a hundred percent, right? So I, I watch these Chinese shows lately, and then they have these ships, and and they they literally have kind of like a house upon the ship, right? Like, <laughs> and 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 the way that they go about their things is is with 
pushing sticks in 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 the lake right like there's there's a way that where where the their motor isn't in in the oars but there there's in the pushing right and so so then everything changes right like it's important for them to stand right well mm -hmm. like if, if you're having oars right like if you all the, these rowboats like you you know what happens when you stand on those? Right? You go like, mm. yeah. <laughs> so, and but but that that's not not a system, right? Like that's just bare necessity. So you can go back to the analogy of the city, right? It's like, well, but now we can make bigger ships, right? Like, so, so it's like let let's do a steamship, right? Like so now we need to pay, have have this place where there's fire, right? Like we need to put that in relationship to to the trust, right? We, we need to transfer the energy to to the what's it called, whatever, like to the water, right? And and then it's like, well, where do we sleep, and, and where do we have the kitchen, right? Like like these these things, like what what do we do with the heat of 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 the steam engine, right? Like, um, and 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 then you get bigger and bigger ships, right? And you can you can see the arms race, right? Like so, there's an arms race and weapons, and 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 then there's also an arms race in the size of ships, and, and and then you get you get to the cruise ships, right? Like the Titanic or whatever. And like the Titanic, they they made the decisions with with these wall areas, right? So so they were privileging, not sinking the whole ship, but just a part of the ship, right? Like the so the, so there's this trade off, but but now that ship is so big, right? Like they have this ballroom, and they have. They have to put the ballroom in relationship to the dinner tables, right? Like, like, and, and so now there's different decision, right? Like the decision isn't about efficiency anymore, right? Like now there's an elegance aspect, like there's a luxury aspect that, that is privileging uh, how things get organized. And I think, I think we're living in the age of affluence now, right? So it's like, oh yes, we can do almost everything on the luxury basis, right? Like that, that is an option that we have, like, it's not efficient, but like, it's possible. And I think that's where everybody gets this impression, like, oh yeah, we can just do that because like we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. Like when I work on the ships also like using that as maybe, and it's very similar to a hospital in a sense, right? Like, um, you have like security, you have, you have crew and you have staff, staff, Staff work in the gift shop, the casino, the uh, musicians or whatever, and they have certain privileges. Then you have the officers. The officers have certain privileges and they're in certain areas. And you have the crew who also live in a different area. Like, And then you have all these different components. You have a trash area, you have a kitchen, you have a galley, you have, you know, and then you have the dining room and you have, and in order to have all these things, you're going to have different people trained different ways. So a system is not only the mechanical aspects of say the hospital or a ship, but also the training that goes into all the people that compromise it. And then that elaborates through a network into a, another system. Where do you get these people? Where do you get the dog nurse for the ship? Where do you get the casino dealers that's trained for the ship? Where do you get the musician from the ship, right? Yeah, now you need a schooling system, right? Because like people need to have certain basic skills to become cooks or cleaning people or whatever, right? Like, like there's this basis, right? And, and now there's this whole organizational structure because someone once decided that we should have these types of ships right effectively but not only that right because like the schooling system is designed that you can specialize in in, in many different ways well like design is a big word but the purpose of it is is to afford that that specialization so now there's something that comes into play like like okay so like a lot of people that's that are say they're against the system the system is broken what we need to do is replace a hierarchical system with a kind of collectively distributed system or a sense where everyone's on the equal playing field. But that kind of eliminates specialization. I don't think that'll work because there's almost a resentment against people that have certain skills, not realizing that those people too are constrained. The captain is constrained in many ways and he doesn't know everything, right? Like he doesn't have supreme power over the ship. Like for instance, I was surprised to know that on a ship, the captain that like we were uh, going into New Orleans and when you went into New Orleans, they had to get a pilot to come on that knew that that knew the Mississippi well enough to guide the ship into the thing. You know what? So like the captain was insufficient in many ways. But then, you know, people could say, oh, we got to overthrow the captain and and take the ships for the common because you had staff and you had crew and the crew 
were less than the staff, who were mostly cleaning people, the working class, kind of usually they were from like third world countries or whatever, whereas the staff were from first world countries, right? And then you almost sense, and I did in a sense feel a sense of injustice in that. I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but hmm, where is I going with that, Manuel? Draw, draw some. Well, yeah, you, you you're trying to to relate the hierarchy to the system and 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 to to the essentiality of the role, right? So there there's an element where, yes, you you the captain doesn't know what the mechanic does, right? Like yeah. there's too much special specialization, and in in the Roman system it was pretty cool. At least the idea was that you you would go up through the ranks of the army, right? So you'd serve in every post of, of the army, and then you'd become a consul, right? So you'd earn your way up. And we, we kind of got rid of, of this, right? Which which in some sense is good that it allows a, a less less of a pathway, right? And like becoming a consul, right? Like like a lot of people didn't make it. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> right? So so so, so there, there, there is an element where, where it's also like, yeah, like it, it, it is, it is less easy to to go up the hierarchy because it's not the normal path, right? Like, if if you're scrubbing decks, that doesn't mean that you can be a mechanic, right? Like, um, and there's a reason for that because you need to study a long time to be a mechanic, right? And then if you're a mechanic, that that doesn't mean that you can be a captain, right? Like, like a captain requires you to have a different skill set and like. Not everybody has that skill set, and um, and yeah, then the question is, well, like, how much, how much does the captain need to know about the mechanic's job? Um, so, if like, you talk about like, like the people that that you hear talking about, like, um, the system's broken, we need to fix the system, we need to replace the system, and then, and then, I, I mean, revolution comes to mind with this, like communist revolution or anarchist re revolutions come to mind, and uh, I mean, thinking like. Hmm, the problems with that, right? They, they they don't realize how easily that if the system breaks, those the foundation, the pillar of that building or that system, when that falls down, they may they think they will be freer, but they won't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, or temporarily, right? Until, until someone winter comes knocking at their door, or until someone comes knocking at the door. Exactly. Like, with, like with you remember the, the um, <laughs> like when they had like defund the police or whatever, right? Yeah. If someone yeah. comes knocking at your door with a new system like that that will happen right like and 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 there's kind of like an evolution to systems right so you have you have mafia type of of situations right where there's that's a, like hmm? that's a perfect example so there you have like some people decide they're going to break free from the system so then they go into crime say and try to make it for themselves and then very soon in that world, they realize that they need to band together with other people. And then there's going to have to be some kind of structure, even in, say, like something as simple as like a, a drug dealer or whatever. Right. There is a system that that of hierarchy that that emerge out of that system. You know what I mean? Like, you know, out of a system of like a, or, and you use the mafia, which was a great example, which would be the evolution of a of a criminal system. Right. Right. Yes. Right. So, so indeed. Right. You you hit the nail on the hat, right? Like there is a point in which it's like, we got to give back to the community, right? Because like they're supporting us, like we, we need their support, right? Like there's there's a different force, like the police or whatever to, that we need to protect ourselves against, right? So, so now you, you, you got to, you, you, you got this responsibility, trust the point, right? And, and this is this is what people don't realize. Yeah, like power, great power comes with great responsibility and and then the question is like well what does that mean right like it as a head of a mafia family that that's a little bit st more straightforward than as a president right because like if if you're if you're on at the head of america for example right like three million more plus people then what you need to do for for that group isn't obvious right like it, it's not like like the direct uh feedback of life is is saying well no you need to react to this you need you need to react to this right? like that that is happening right but but going to the moon isn't a reaction to 
to something on the ground, right? Like that's stating, no, like I want to be like this. I, I have this ideal. I want to manifest this ideal. And we're going to unite around around this ideal. And there, so there, there's a problem between uh, this emergent quality and, and this emanating quality. Right, so so there, there there there's this emergence, and then something exists, right? Like there's there's a bunch of people, right? Like he he does all the dirty jobs, right? The killing, that that guy does does the shipping, that guy does the accounting, right? But but, but then it's like you you grow bigger, right? And there's a hierarchy in the accounting, and there's a hierarchy in the shipping. And and the killing can can be done like this because there needs to be protection on like fifteen different places, right? And, and now you need to these complex structures, right? Like you need to, like how are we getting all these people to do this, right? Like <laughs> there needs to be an actual organization. And yeah, like at that point, you you need to start making decisions, right? Like okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is what we want to achieve, and, and that's where the emanation comes. So I don't know if I want to touch on this yet, but there's almost like a theological principle or metaphysical principle too, in the sense, right? Like, so like, it's, it's funny too, many of the people that say that they don't want a system are also opposed to like, they think that religion or, or ideologies in control of the system, the wrong religion or the wrong ideology, right? So you mentioned something about ideals, right? So like, does any given system has to be organized around a central principle? Like, let's, you know what I mean? Like, so like, so let's say the mafia, what would the central, I mean, they, they would have the, obviously the goal of making money, right? But there's mm -hmm. also things like respect and loyalty, or also like, um, trying to use another example. Well, you, you, you can have people organize around a person that is embodying certain principles, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's really effective, right? But it, it's not lasting, right? Like if that person gets removed, then you have a problem. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and so if you point at the principles as opposed to the person, then you can persist past the removal of of this individual. And and nope. that that's that's a project that they did in ancient China, right? Like they were like, what are the principles that we can follow? And even in the ancient Greece, right? Like what are the principles that we can follow so that we can persist and have Good society. So, which is interesting because this brings up brings the thing that Peterson and people touch on is um having a like okay like P did you see the video? There's Peterson was talking about the Queen, right? And he was talking about um he's kind of relating he kind of compared the the English system to the American system, right? In the American system, you can have a personality like Trump. He's at the top of the hierarchy. There's no one to constrain him. In the European, in the in the Commonwealth constitutional, uh, what is it? Constitutional monarchy? I don't know what it is. I should know. It's my fucking country. Use Canada, but uh, yeah, you have the Queen, the the Queen who I embodies the God or whatever. Like you know what I mean? Like so, like you have the person that's in control of the company, but also they they aren't the the top of the hierarchy. Not as the Queen. There's some kind. Of, there's something that Peterson said about that organization that made me really take heed and go oh that's really interesting right mm -hmm. and and it related to almost the, the metaphysical situation right now i know that the state in the states they say uh you know under, under, they have god is it mentioned or somehow i don't know i'm not able to articulate myself but maybe you can take the take a run for with my steam stream of consciousness man you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like i i, I think this idea, right? Like uh, Louis the Fourteenth, I think said, "L'état c'est moi." Right? This, I am the state. Uh, so there's there's a a thing where, where if you have a strong personality and then everything starts revolving around you, right? Like so, so one of the things that that in France during that time was really happening was that they set the fashions, right? And not not only for France but for, for the whole of Europe, right? Like oh. And there's 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 this thing right where there's this this aura that you build up and, and but but what is it right like this this king is in some sense representing the divine principle right and then at a certain point the 
the parliaments, right, like the representatives of of uh, of the people, they they started getting more and more voice, right? Like they started organizing, right? There were some scuffles in in England. They even even killed the king, right? But then they reinstated the king because they were like, yeah, we, we can't go without the king, right? We we still need to unify behind the king. And so Hashtag reign of terror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 so, that, so there's there's the struggle, right? Like, what is the appropriate place for the king? What's the appropriate place for? Mm. And and I think uh, at, at a certain point, the king receded in as a ruler and was more cast into the representative role right like in, in some sense representative of the people but more so representative of the nation right like so if mm. if you see what what's happening now for example i know the dutch royal house right like they they're traveling right they're, they're going to other other countries they, they meet with their royal families right they're they're having negotiations for cooperation right like so so, so they're they're increasing the quality of of the integration of the nation with it within the other nations and and i think that that is a, a valid ceremonial role right and, and also within the nation right like there's certain national holidays where, where these they're fulfilling ceremonial functions right so, so there there is this uh, i guess re somewhat representing the divine that 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 the royalty still still has in, in Europe. So I I remember I remember what I said. You're talking about Trump, right? Like Trump doesn't have anyone that can really call him on shit. You know when he was in power or or the president well, in general. That that was the role of the media, but yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's really that's an excellent point. And then and then the, I remember them talking about how the queen, um, God rest her soul, um, uh. <clears throat> The queen, um, we, under so many prime ministers, and she could, she could, kind of like, you know, she she was in a role where she could, where she could tell him. I, I, ironically enough, huh? Who was in the past the jester? <laughs> Anyways, who knows what the clown is? But that's an entirely different random uh, thought association. But yeah, so the queen could could talk to the prime minister and and give him a sense. Now she didn't weld any actual constitutional power to enact laws or or whatever but uh yeah so i i don't know i don't remember exactly what he said but uh, i'm sure someone out there put in the comments if you find out where that video is with peterson talking about that yeah like i i don't know if they changed it but the dutch king uh, actually had uh, to approve every law oh okay he had to sign actually, in, every law in canada we have a thing called the governor general and like a lot of people want to remove the governor general. So if we change, make any changes to our constitution. We have to get it rubber stamped by the queen or king of England or sorry, of UK or whatever of the Commonwealth. Yeah. See, so, so there, there is something there. Right. And, and it's like, yeah, like, and I think, I think it's appropriate. Right. Cause it's like, you don't get involved in the nitty gritty affairs. Right. But there, there is, certain things that there, there should be a check and balance upon what 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 this group of representatives is doing right like and and, and changing a constitution is is one of these things that that is like a monumental thing and if you're if you're part of something bigger right like you you should get approval of the something bigger for the monumental thing like i i, I fully agree now I was thinking you said something about ideals too. And I thought like, I thought like in places that I really wish I knew what the word was. Well, well it sounds like you have a similar uh, political system as I, where, where it's like a, a democracy, but you also have a constitutional monarchy. Is that the word? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Maybe someone in the comments could put that in, but, um, but also the king or queen kind of embodying, representing the nation, but also embodying almost like the higher, the highest hierarchy. I was thinking of the ultimate, system that we can't comprehend would almost adventure on not only philosophical or ideological frame but on a metaphysical spiritual frame right like god save the queen right or king yeah right like so, so 
so there, there's a bunch of hierarchies that that coexist right so like the political hierarchy always exists right like you you always need to organize the polis the people right and then parallel to that you you often have the the military hierarchy right and you can you can see mm. the police as, as an extension of, of of that in some sense right although they they want to decouple these um and 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 then there's in in the financial system right like you you, you can have a financial hierarchy right if you mm. if you go to sh like socialists or communist uh systems right where where the money is is being managed in such a way that that it constrains the self-expression of, of people and um but but you can have capitalism where where that constraint isn't happening through the state but then it's effectively happening through emergence right like now there's someone who has a lot of money and like elon musk and he he gets to decide to buy twitter right yeah yeah um, Hashtag Elon Musk. and so 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 like now there's there's a bunch of reorganization happening there and but but yeah like that that has to happen right like someone has to make the decisions um and yeah, since since we can go back to what what do these people want, right? Like people think they know what they want and what they need. Well, the other thing, the other thing I think is, well, let me if maybe we go rewind back to where we talked about it, what my question originally was: what is a system? Mm -hmm. And when people say the system is broken, what do they mean? But also when they talk about a system, many people I don't think even understand that they're embedded in a whole series of systems. Their, their organs are in a system. Their body is a functioning system of smaller components that are interlinked and networked together, right? Like, you know, you have the circulatory system, you have the respiratory system, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, where am I going with that? So I think a lot of times when people are just talking about the system, they, they're using an ill, they have this ill-defined thing that frightens them and they're trying to conjure up some kind of like uh, egregore that will make sense of, of the world and then they will be able to feel that they have agency. Now, Mark, Mark kind of thought thought that uh, when people are talking about the system, what they're really trying to do is find some sense of feel feeling of control or f yeah, feeling of agency. I don't, I don't, yeah. What do you think of that? Or maybe you care to elaborate on that? Well, yeah, I think a good way to think about it is the hermeneutics of suspicion, right? So when yes. when you're trying to understand something, where are you coming from, right? Like is is the thing that you're perceiving an evil force because like you're frustrated in your life and you can't do what you want or is the thing that that you're seeing something that you you can participate in right um so i've been thinking a lot about the word enjoyment right so and is wit right and joy is is <laughs> what oh my now I'm going deep. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. So, so joy is, I guess, a sense of participating in glory or something. Um, mm. Like it's 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 seeing that things are right or something. Uh, seeing seeing that things are are bearing fruit, and and you, and 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 there's there's a way that you're participating in the in the creation of the food. I think that's what enjoy is, right? So you, you you're and what what is important about that is is that you're doing it with with something outside of you, right? You're you're in the thing and you're joining with it. And that has to be bigger than you. Right? Like the the, the thing outside of you is necessarily more than you. Uh, so so it's bigger than you, right? So so that can be scary, right? Viveki talks about awe and horror. Right. Yes. Can, yes. Can so find something awesome. Oh my god! Like I just was part of it, or it's like, oh my god! Like all of this stuff, and like, what is it doing to me? And like, like, there, there's these two two modalities that you you can relate to that, and I think people don't. They're, yeah, they they they're projecting their frustration up, up, upon the system, right? And and in instead they should find a way to to find joy in the system right like the system is well the system is composed of people first of all right so what the system is doing is dependent on what they're doing right and so if you're part of the system 
you can make it move slightly towards a a way of manifesting instead of another way of manifesting. So that's one thing. And then with within your place in the system, you are communing with with people, right? So 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 even even if the manifestation of the system is bad, your manifestation towards the people around you can be good. And it, that that requires you to to have a a level of detachment in some sense from 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 the identity of the whole system right like and and we were talking about agency right like it it's also like a joy is 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 maybe identifying with the thing that you did have agency with in, in, so so in, instead of presupposing where you have agency you're finding out like oh no my agency manifested it, right like so instead of having this arrogant position like i know what is going to be happening you're like this just happened and i get to be a part of it so now when we talk about the system or many people that are against the system that feel the system is broke feel that the system is oppressive sometimes i think and then they come up with conspiracy theories and i came up with the idea that the thing that would absolutely terrify them is th for them to accept how emergent all these systems are because it's much even though they would feel oppressed They'd much rather feel that they're oppressed by by uh, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk than believe that no one's completely in control because that terrifies them. The belief that there is not one central thing in control, and that's because they don't have a hierarchy and they don't have the hierarchy of a metaphysical notion, right? A metaphysical sense of order, right? Which which would relate to almost materialism, and also relate to like certain uh, certain like metaphysical or theological um, positions of doubt. Yeah, and, and, and why why do you think they want to have this evil being at the top to to be upset about? Because in a, in an ironic sense, it's almost more relieving that at least someone's in control. You know what I mean? Because if you if you can't have God at the top of the hierarchy, or or some 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 organizing principle of the universe, whatever you want to call it, higher power or whatever, um, if you don't have anything, then that's terrifying. Because then everything's meaningless random and chaotic well yeah or you have to take responsibility for uh for things around yeah that's a good point excellent point yeah right because because not everything is chaotic right like i i organize my house in a certain way do i take sufficient responsibility for organizing my house probably not right <laughs> um should I do that? Well, maybe not. Maybe I, I get a wife and she can do that, <laughs> right? Because she's probably better at it than I am because if I was better, I would have done it. <laughs> and, <laughs> but 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 what, what did I just say? Well, the way that I express in the world would be better if I was part of this small system. Like the set yeah, system that's of, good. of participating in, in, in a role where you're not you're not having the same skills right you, you you're not having the same contribution so so you're not equal right like you, you you're not you, you're, you're contributing it's different things but you're contributing to the same project and the project wouldn't exist without either of you right so you're both necessary but not equal yeah i mean and people come frustrated with systems all the time i mean i i've heard a number of times people go they're frustrated with like you know our de our democratic or capitalistic systems, and they think, well, you know, maybe it would be good. Maybe if we had a good dictator, it would be all right. You know what I mean? Maybe because then we could at least finally get something done. Yeah, and good di I don't know. Dictators are I, awesome. What's that? The good dictators are awesome. Like, yes. Yeah, but does that? Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> no, but yeah. but but. Like, oh, someone who's actually knows what to do and has power, great, right? Like <laughs> that that's amazing. Um, but the problem is, right, like that what happens in a generation one with the next generation? generation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh it's it's utopia. It's a it's utopia, right? And for some reason, like for instance, like we were talking about the French Revolution earlier, right? And they they thought the divine 
right? Of uh, who was it? Was it Robo Spare that uh, ended up leading the reign of terror? I mean, he he ended up becoming like worse than the king ever was, right? I mean, millions of people were executed, right? In the name of liberty and freedom, and yeah, well, that that happened, right? Like, if you if you want to take control, uh, people are not going to move with you, right? Like, you, you can you can see it in yourself, right? If you want to change something in your life, you're not going to move with yourself. Like, you, you need so much prodding and poking, and it's like, yeah, mm. like it, it's it's really hard to change something that is, and like, then people are going to fall off the boat. And in a sense, our culture values so much individual individuality. And I, and I, I find myself prided upon that. And like, you know, I'm an individual. And you see, you see it even in cultural things. Ironically, they're not. Like, I, I go to punk shows occasionally. And it's like, look at all these individuals. They're all wearing jean jackets with patches. And, you know, like, it's, it couldn't be more of a uniform. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the uniform of rebellion yes yeah and yeah and this isn't necessarily related but like when you think the system is broken then you you use the term revolution in the sense of it being a circle that goes around the thing is when people think revolution they think that it's going to stop on the utopia well yeah or, it's not. Or, or, or just their lives right like <laughs> like I'll, I'll have it good during my life or, or i have it good and then i'll move to another country right or like whatever like, yeah but people but it's hard right like it's hard to think far into the future right it's in in a sense what's happening is really childish right like i want this make this happen right it's like yes you want this um maybe we can make it happen somewhat but there's a trade-off right and and it's not only a trade-off between all the buckets that we have right now right it's it's a trade-off between all the buckets that we have not right now and all the buckets that we could have it one one thing I'll, I'll jump around a little bit one thing that's interesting too is the the um the uh i don't know what the word is the enmity or 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 just like thinking that Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos are horrible. But when you think about the intricate systems that they develop, like think about Amazon, like if you think about how amazing that system is, and they're like, oh, well, they're just, they should just play their employees more. But that system has enabled a whole, like they don't produce anything. They're just a distribution network that's allowing millions of people to produce things and sell them online, right? Like that's, and it, that's an amazing, complicated system, right? And then they think that, oh, well, if these people at the top of these various corporate hierarchies just like, you know, they want to flatten those hierarchies, but they don't realize that those hierarchies would not exist if, if those hierarchies were flattened, right? Yeah, so I, I would argue that you want to you want to take a spiritual frame for this, right? So it's like, like what what are they doing, right? Like, so there's this one person at the top, right? Which, which is literally like this king, right? Like they're, they, they emerged, right? Like they're the shining star that, that people started following. And and so in their wake, right, they they, they drag along people, right? Like they, they have a spirit, they manifest the spirit and, and they drag along people. And these people, right, like they don't start start becoming nodes of the heart, right? And so so there there's an em, there's an emergence within the emanation right where where it's like okay we're well we're we're building a bunch of ships right and then, then the ships is at sea and we're like well kind of putting the kitchen like on the side of the ship doesn't work because the fire mm -hmm. goes up right like so we shouldn't, <laughs> we shouldn't be doing that right and so then then there's this these smaller subunits these containers right like so it's like a distribution center, for example, right? Like, like I want to manifest this, right? Like I want to manifest this building and this building has this certain needs, right? And, and like, I, I need these types of people to cooperate with me, right? So you, you kind of get like a a schema, right? Or whatever, right? Like, and and, and you, you, you have to fit it in the local, right? Like there's the, the like, 
there's a place where you can't build into the ground because there's only rock, for example, right? So, so now you need you can't build the same distribution center, right? So so there's you need to adjust to to the local building requirements, but you still want to fulfill the same function, right? And so 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 there's there's I guess I'm I'm talking about this this interaction between the constraints of reality, right? The skills of the people and and the idea, right? Like how things should work, right? And then you, you get you get a new instantiation, right? Like you get a new baby version of 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 your formula, right? And now that baby relates with the world, right? Now you get lessons that can feed back up the hierarchy, and we can we can give that information back to all of all of the nodes in our network, right? The, to to update, right? So there's there's these these data communications at different time scales and and in, in different domains, right? Because they also have the internet part, right? And they, there's all of this interface that kind of emerges, right? But at a certain point, someone says things have to emerge in this way because that's how we gather information. And so Ayn Rand had an interesting thing when I say I uh, use and talk about Thomas Edison for example. The same thing could have been said of Thomas Edison in his time. This could be said about Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or or uh, Steve Jobs, right? You know, like you know, like so that person ends up making a lot of money out of their profit. But how much wealth did they contribute to society? Like how much enormous wealth has the automobile or the car contributed to millions of people having jobs, making cars, millions of people being able to work at night? You know, like that can even be be calculated, really, right? Like, you know, the so uh, rising tide raises all ships or something. Is that the same? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but. Like I said, right? Like when you're doing one thing, you're not doing another thing. And the other thing too, when people talk about systems, they're they're talking about they're trying to talk at like such a high frame that it's like it doesn't even make sense anymore. You know what I mean? Like the system is if there's some overarching common commonality. I mean, maybe there is, but once you get into well, that, that, that's that what thing, they want to make about... politics, right? Like that's the, like that. Why is everybody so upset about Ukraine? Right, like there's wars all over, right? But this one is special, right? And and the reason that it's special is because there's there's this thing, right? The system and the system is is manifesting in a certain way, and we all think like, oh yeah, there's this control, and now it's frustrated. Like the system is frustrated, right? It's like, yeah, Russia isn't keeping international law, and therefore we need to invest obscene amounts of money in Ukraine, right? Like, so there, there's this, this sense that there's, there's something that we need to protect, right? Like there's this story that we all believe in. And if Russia proves to the world that the story is just a story, then the story doesn't work anymore. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So the entire thing with Russia and stuff is interesting too, because again, so the, so the the questions that I'm pondering, and we'll table some of this for another talk, but like the relationship of networks to systems, right? So what we're seeing now is the international system that has been based on globalization starting to change, almost a deglobalization since COVID happened, is a result of numerous inter interconnected systems. You realize how interconnected. All of a sudden, we're like, holy shit, we're we're dependent upon these nodes. And if something like COVID or disease happens, all of a sudden these nodes fall apart at key points of infrastructure and we can no longer build fucking cell phones soon. You know, like now all of a sudden they're going to, all of a sudden the United States is having to reshore most of their electronics, right? Or let's say China has like, God forbid, if this were to happen hypothetically, a uh, dictatorial leader took control, you know, and had control of key infrastructure of like the world's technological, you know, uh, like to produce chips or whatever, what would happen, right? So you're having like it's a series of interconnected, I think the Russian thing too, like you have this series of interconnected uh, network systems and, and then people are trying to understand that. And then they, it's so complicated. You're talking about economic systems, you're talking about political systems, you're talking about ideological systems, and then you're talking about the numerous systems that are just people like in relating to their own individual lives, their nationalities, their personal religious beliefs, their sense of identity, 
And all that is just so complicated. It's so much easier to believe that somewhere is a dark Sith-like, shadow-like cabal controlling all of it. Mm -hmm. And it, it, kind of what you're talking about, right? Like, for example, COVID or or the war, right? Like, so in in Ukraine, there was a bunch of people, and they they they, they thought of themselves a certain way, and then the invasion happened, and then the way that they think about themselves completely changed. Right, like COVID happens, right? Like nations re-articulate what what they think is important, right? Like they there's there there is this latent spirit, right? Because not every nation is is reacting the same way to COVID, right? But but they're manifesting a spirit of the country in in their reaction, right? But but they're also identifying against this COVID thing, right? In 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 some some ways necessarily right and and in other ways they too much right like this there, there there was a there was a sense in which not enough was done and there was a sense in which too much was done and and how how do you figure that out in the moment well that's almost impossible like it's almost impossible right but but you're required to right so like you 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 had to go through something like that yourself, right? Like at a certain point, you had to move, right? Like, who are you when you move? And then you get yeah. into this, this identity class. And then how do you want to manifest? Who do you want to be? Yeah, and I think ultimately too, like ironically enough, like we're talking about like you, you and Mark often and, and others and myself too, talk about like political frame, right? And then the philosophical frame, but really everything's kind of, you know, it's like all uh, political and ideological frames could be put under philosophy, really. And even science could be put under philosophy. But then the higher frame is the metaphysical, right? So in a sense, on a personal level, where, where do you get your uh, ability to exhibit agency in the world and deal with the, the meaning crisis that we often talk about or deal with uh, existential despair or to deal with... Um, I guess, I guess in this situation, we're more talking about the anxiety, right? The anxiety of being involved in external circumstances that you have no control over, right? And then, so that that comes that comes back to like, you know, so are you going to sign agency that just makes you angry to like some shadow-like Sith-like cabal? Or are you going to affirm the good, as you say, and not act against and, you know, let go like God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think the word that I want to introduce to is here is surrender, right? Like, what are you surrendering to, right? Are you surrendering to COVID? Is, is COVID going to determine how you live now? Like, really? Yeah, uh, you, you you said that. That strikes something very interesting, Manuel. Like, you talk about identifying against. Ironically, the people that are identifying against masks, against, you know, whatever, the, the you know, the, the globalists trying to put in the, the evil COVID agenda, right? In a sense, they those forces in acting against, they are submitting to those to COVID itself. Like maybe you could round out what I'm trying to say because I'm not able to articulate it. Well, yeah, right. So, so you, when when you're doing something, right, you're you're doing something for a purpose, right? So, are you are you relating to COVID? because it's an inhibition towards you going to work or are you relating to COVID because you're afraid of what COVID could do, right? If, if you're in the second group, that that's not a good strategy. First of all, you don't, you don't know what COVID could do. You don't know how to relate to what COVID could do, right? There's, there's a couple of things that are, are, well, common sense wouldn't be the right word, but they, they, they're obvious, right? Like washing your hands when something happens, right? Where you could have been like not coughing in someone's face, right? Like these things are obvious. And then it starts getting more fuzzy and fuzzy after that, right? And I was like, yeah, like I want to get like half a percent more out of this chance or whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe, right? But like, do do you do you know the side of it, right? Like, and and at a certain point, you you should you should not give in to to the fear anymore, right? 
like like even if you can make progress right like even if what you do actually is beneficial right like it's it's taxing right it's taxing in in the way that that you're operating but it's also taxing on your mental health. like why well, you can't walk around worried all the time like then you get stressed and you get different diseases like okay how's that bad <laughs> yeah i was thinking too like okay you talk about these these people in in portland like the riots and you talk about like the freedom convoy and stuff and like you know some people getting so so angry and frustrated in a sense they're resisting something they're acting against something but in a way they're submitting to the anger and the fear that that thing is causing so in a way they are wanting freedom but they're they're losing all their agency to these darker emotions right uh, i was listening to uh, a show a dutch show earlier and they were talking about black pete and how there was this wave of people actually coming from America, right? Who was were like implying that this is racist or, or that they felt discriminated against through this traditional feast, right? Dutch feast. And there was this whole drama around it, right? And and actually the Dutch society adapted, right? And and there's there's a couple of pocket of people who say like no like I want to have my tradition and like you you don't have a say in in how I I have my tradition and then what what do they do well they, they go there and they go protest and I'm like why why are you going to this town in the middle of whatever bothering these people right about your your ideology. And, and and then these people, right? They're like, okay, you you want to come here and attack us, right? You you want to identify against us? Well, we'll identify against you, and and we'll see how wins, who wins, right? And yeah. that that that's the thing that will happen, right? Like, if if you're gonna keep calling me a racist, I'll be a racist. Like, like if if you need me to be, I'll be one. Like, cause like. Yeah, like I don't like people who call me a racist all the time. Like, yes. So, yeah, so that it'll... reaction is really natural and it's really dangerous too. And and I found myself, you know, and thank goodness, you know, my life experience has put me in touch with other people, right? Of different nationalities. It's put me in touch with indigenous people and transgender people and it given me some perspective. But it can be very easy to go into that rabbit hole, you know, when people are identifying against. And like, for instance, I have a friend who corrects me on my pronouns all the time. And you know what? It gets pretty annoying after a while. Someone keeps dictating your speech. Eventually, you're going to react against. They're acting against to the virtue signal. Then I act against. It's almost like we both enter this relationship such that the emergent qualities manifest that are negative. But I think right. we're getting away from. No, no, and no. Then, no and but, then... but but I don't think we're getting away from it, right? Because like, what is happening? They're trying to impose a system, right? Yeah. And, and what is happening? Well. You're you're resisting the system that is imposed upon, right? Now the yeah. question is, are you resisting because you're a bigot, or are you resisting because the system that they're imposing is not functional? Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's, it's not. Functional. It's all luxury, right? It's all baked air. And, and the, iron the ironic thing is these it, these people. See, I almost fell into it. I apologize. No, but like, there are people. Well, no, the ironic is there are people who are using their cell phones, who are driving their cars that have all been created by systems that they say are completely, you know, like those systems that, that oppress them. And I'm not going to deny that oppression never happened. I'm not going to deny that, that bad things have happened. But but like those systems enabled them the privilege to be able to criticize the system. So ironically, they are a product of the system even in their acting against and even in their rebellion. Right. Yeah. You, you, how, like, are you protesting gravity? Like, it, it's pretty annoying that I can fly. Like, what, what the heck? Right? Like, nobody's doing, well, not nobody, but people ain't doing that. Right. And so it's like, what, what, what things, are you highlighting and what 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 gives you the justification to say well that this is not how it should 
Um, if if you highlight something all the time, right? It's like I'm depressed. I can't get better. I'm depressed. I can't get better. I'm depressed. I can't get better. Are you gonna get better if you if that's in your head? No, because like you you have a hermeneutics where you're looking for the thing that won't make you better, right? There, there's a and if you're smart, like someone who, who thinks he's smart. <laughs> you can find many, many ways to to say, well, like I did this and that wasn't good because I, I and, and you can you can always find a trick, like you, you can always find a reason, like oh, I'm not going to do this because, like, whatever. And you can get really fancy with your reasons, but you, you got to stop, right? Like you either do it or you don't, and. The reason you do it is because you want to. The reason you don't do it is because you don't want to. Like that's the only valid reason. So if we were to recap, so what is a system? And when people say the system, what do they mean? And ultimately, yeah. And, and what is the individual's ideal relationship to the systems that impede upon their lives? that impede upon their lives and enable their lives. Yeah. My, well, my argument would be you go with it, right? Like when, when, when you, when you uh, pet a dog, right? You, you go with the hairs, not against them. If you go against the hairs, like the dog will get upset because it's not nice. So you, you can go against it or you get a different dog. If, if, if that if it's such a big deal but like I, i've been i've been having conversations with people over the years right it's like if you go to a hospital to get a checkup right you submit to the structure of the hospital and they're gonna ask you stupid questions they're gonna send you everywhere and it's like it's gonna be <laughs> a hassle right and you can be upset while doing it or you can just accept that, okay, I decided to do this and this is part of what I decided to do. And I should have known better before I went to do this. So I don't know if I, I'm going to have to think about the system thing more. I'd love to, I'd love to like engage with it again. So I think the system is a, uh, is, is both an emergent emanation phenomenon that has evolved over time. And then they're extremely complex. And they're not, they're not the product of one man or one group of people. No one has all that power, right? There's an emergent quality and there's an emanation quality. And the emanation quality, and if you follow that up, trying to track that down, it'll ultimately start at a point that is uh, an ultimate mystery in a sense. But uh, there is a danger in opposing the system in that, you know, like, like, yeah, try to take apart a military helicopter and put it back together when you don't have the training, right? You know what I mean? And you were, yeah, so where am I going with that? So what is the system? Well, no, don't yeah. don't put it back together. Change the parts and make it work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was good. So yeah, I still don't know that I could, if I could succinctly say what a system is, but I can say what a system is not. And then when people say the system, I think that they're often using that term in a reductionistic fashion such that they don't understand that they're, what they're dealing with is not one system. What they're dealing with is a network of multiple systems that are interrelated in such a level of constant. And the thing is, when you start pulling strings out of different nodes, you don't know which node is going to break your connection to other systems. Right. And you, you could take like a somewhat radical step and say, well, a system is, is, a, is a way of intelligibility that I impose upon the world, right? So you, you, could, you could say, right, like there's the system of oil distribution, right? It's like, well, in, in order to understand certain things about the world, I can look at the, at the way that oil flows across the world and now I can, I can relate to that, right? Like if I'm an oil company, I can say, well, maybe I should send more oil to this place because it sounds like there, there's a lack of oil there, right? And I could probably sell it, right? So now, right, now that system is going to feed back into itself, right? 
but 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 it's it's an intelligibility and then the question is well should i should should i do that right like is is that a good decision to base my decision upon the flow of oil like maybe i should talk to people and let them tell me whether they want to buy oil but maybe they don't want know that they want to buy oil and if i go there and i I show them what oil can do, then they're like, holy shit, like I want some of that stuff, right? So <laughs> so it, it's not obvious, right? But what is obvious in relating to systems is they're a tool, right? So, mm -hmm. so you could say like they're spiritual things, so, so they're not actual things, right? Like they're a consequence of our belief and adherence to that belief. And so if if i if if i start treating the world as if there's this power narrative or this racism narrative right i'm going to manifest the world in a specific way right like i'm i'm going to establish certain relationships between people and that's going to have an effect upon the world so i would say that use the systems to understanding of systems that are going to manifest the world around you that that contribute to the group like so know know why you choose to look at a system and what what your agency is in relation to that system and when and when you act against a system like uh, i think of system systems are complex they're interrelated and no system is not connected to another system so when you start saying that oh i'm going to overthrow the system i'm going to change the system you may be, yeah, you, you may, yeah, at a certain point, the system can crash, right? And, uh -huh. and then, and then, and then you think that you're, you're trying to assert your freedom, but there are people that are going to oppose you that are going to say, the system must be maintained, not just for me, but for you. Yeah. And if, if you, if you are against the system so much, compete with it, create a better one. Like, why why are you trying to overthrow it? Like, just competition is better than, like, you, you want to wage war instead of just show that you're better? Because I know why you're not showing that you're better. Because you're not. Like, that's as simple as it is. And if you are, like, prove it. That's great. That's a great way to wrap it up. That was a, that was a mic drop right there, Manuel. Well, thanks everybody for watching this uh, impromptu dialogos with uh, Corey. Um, I hope to see you in the next episode.